Good afternoon. Um, my name is Simon Davidman. I'm going to um, start because we're on time. I've got uh, 10 minutes, quite a short presentation. What I'm going to talk about is um, um, the challenges that Armdahl predicted when he started talking about parallel processing and how that really affects architecture exploration and where that fits with, with RISC-V. Um, so I had to do some digging to understand a little bit about Armdahl there. And actually his law, he, he, he uh, stated in 67, he was an IBM computer architect, entrepreneur. He left IBM when they didn't like what he wanted to do in terms of his architecture. He, he set up Armdahl to be cheaper, faster, and more reliable. But the key thing is actually it was plug compatible in his world. And basically, without the mathematics, what it ended up really saying was that the bits that are serial are going to affect the overall performance when you start parallelizing things. And um, I actually came across Gene Amdahl. I was in a company called Gateway, the, the people that built Verilog. And he was actually quite a conservative guy. I, I, this wasn't my ad or anything, but uh, it was our ad. And he it was quite interesting because he was one of the customers and one of the, the early adopters of Verilog and Verilog XL to help with the performance of the machine he was building in a company called uh, Alexi. But so, the challenge, the challenge we have, and this is where Amdahl comes in, is that um, machine intelligence, and I'm not expecting you to see the detail on some of these slides, it's really to show there's a, a real challenge of the amount of compute that is needed in the future of this machine learning and, and artificial intelligence. There is just so much compute that's needed, so much calculation, and it's growing at a phenomenal rate. And the challenge, as we all know with um, if we've been in this electronics industry a while, that Moore's law says we're going to get more and more silicon, which is fine in the top line there. You can see that, it, that it's going up there in terms of transistors. But what you can see from about 2005 on is that actually we, we stopped getting the performance, the clock speeds, the, the increase in performance that we need to basically build better products in the electronics world and do more computing. And actually, if you look at the bottom, starting 2005, people started adding more cores. It was sort of the era of sort of multi-core um, platforms back then. And so we need more performance and more compute. We're not going to get it from a single processor, so we've got to go to multi-core. And just a couple of numbers, you know, some simple image recognition stuff, this thing called AlexNet, and I'll talk more about that. You've got a, a billion multiply accumulates that you need to do to process things. x86 not getting any faster. We've got to do some form of special processing and, and run in parallel. That's where Andal's law is going to come in and, and say how we can, uh, where we're going to get the bottlenecks and things. And, and the key thing is it has to be the correct parallelism, and that's what Andal says for the application that you've got. And one of the key challenges that designers need is they need to know that the algorithms they're building are going to run on this hardware and vice versa. The hardware is going to run the, the algorithms um, that they need. And there are many different approaches to parallelism. And when we founded Empiris, one of the things that we wanted to do was to try and help people with the programming of these multi-core devices. And this is I've cut half the slide off here. This was a slide that I used to use in 2007 about people that had designed multi-core processors. And basically, it was a graveyard back then that many companies had built architectures that, that some of them worked, some of them didn't. But they never found a sort of application because they were too hard to program, or they never really delivered the performance. And there are, that was just a, probably about an 18-month snapshot of the companies that we talked to and we were trying to sell to, and that it went bust, basically, back then in, in the sort of the multi-core era. They were trying to address the performance issue. And now we're in a very different era uh, around the sort of machine learning, where there is, there is actually established software before that people were trying to design hardware, and they, they really didn't have the software uh, for it. Now we're in a very different place where people have got, there's a lot of software being established for the machine learning and the uh, deep learning and artificial intelligence, and there's a, a variety of them. And they actually are putting requirements on the hardware platform. So it's actually a very different um, sort of world. And uh, these slides actually came from, uh, actually, I went to the um, 
um, AI hardware conference. Here's a, a synopsis slide here. And, you know, it's talking about some of the variations. Actually, it's a Xilinx slide looking at it. They picked it from uh, Xilinx from Hot Chips. And so there's several different styles in, uh, of hardware. Still, people are trying to work out things from on the left there, you know, the scalar processes with vectors. On the right, you've got completely different microarchitectures and arrays of processes. And people over the years have been trying to build all these different things for different, different purposes. And, but now we, we've got the software we're trying to, in this space, we've got the software we, we know. And actually, one of the architectures I quite like is one from a company called um, GraphCore, a UK company, which is a, an approach to doing it in such a way which gives you predictable results and predictable performance. And there's, again, it's targeting machine learning. And the BSP, I, I, I like that. So where does Empiris fit with this? Now, I'm definitely, I'm definitely not a machine learning expert or uh, that we're, we're a hardware tool vendor. Um, and what we do is we build models of processes and we allow people to build their own. We have a huge library of them and we have a very good modeling technology. So if you've got your own ISA or your own extensions or your own custom smarts, you can do that. We have a library of all the behavioral components. Well, not, not all, but a lot of the standard ones. And there's over 300 in the library from all the sort of standard platform components you need from sort of Ethernet, USB, and all that sort of stuff. Um, we have technology to put all these together in, in, in sort of platforms and what we call virtual platforms or virtual prototypes. And you can configure it and, and build your platforms to run it. And our simulators can then simulate that and run. Here's an example of, uh, we have a, a, this is an example, see if it, it runs here, there's a couple of things I have to get through. So this is a simulation model of a Sci-5 quad core, it's actually five core uh, processor running an SMP Linux on my laptop while it's got the projection stuff on it. And you know, there we've logged in, and we can log in and, uh, I managed to type there. We can see it's a, you know, this is Linux looking at the proc info. We can see there's a five core, a uh, four core processor in there. So it's a very fast simulator, very interactive, and that ran almost a billion instructions there. And so you can see uh, we can do AMP, SMP, and you can do the whole platform. And then we have a debugger that can see the whole platform. So it allows you to develop it and debug it. We've got tools for analysis and all sorts of verification technologies as well. And an example is uh, in the RISC V world, because that's where we are at the moment, we have a vector engine, which uh, uh, we can simulate all of the RISC V vector stuff, and, and it's all configurable. And we've worked on several AI projects, uh, one which is a full machine learning AI engine with over 150 cores, takes two hours to run a, one of their test suites through it, which is at 500 MIPS. So it's pretty sophisticated performance. But the key thing is they'll actually get they have the model up and running a year before the commit to, to the silicon. So they can actually test it and analyze it and get a lot of it working. And, and then they can feed that into the verification space. Uh, another example is working with a Japanese partner, ESOL. And this is an in interesting because it has many RIS-5 cores in it, but also an ARM, so it's heterogeneous. And they like us because we're fast and we've got the debugger and we can simulate it. And they're using this Alexnet um, uh, network, uh, neural network program. But the key thing is there's a million, hundred, I'm sorry, a thousand million multiply ads to do uh, a computation here. And so what they can do, the great thing about these algorithms is you can split them up quite easily and they're separate. It's not like a standard random program that's very hard to partition. So you can split this up and run it on many cores of which they built a platform to do that so they can run um, a heterogeneous environment. They get uh, sort of windows into the different things so they can see what's happening into the arm or whatever. And on the right there, you can see a little performance thing. So our, our software allows you to see which processes are active and which are, are running efficiently. They have the multi-core debug so they can just click on you know, the ARM processor and be dugging, debugging that or click on one of the RISC-V processors and be debugging that. It does uh, analysis in, you know, yes, it's not as fast as you do it if you do it in silicon, but the simulation, they reckon it's about an order of magnitude slower than running it natively on an x86, which is pretty good in terms of simulation capability. And, uh, you know, they like its speed. They like the ability to debug. So it's made it easy for them to start evaluating the architecture that they need there. So. To wrap up, you know, what we do is we build simulation, uh, allows you to run before silicon, you get your um, software running, then you can do analysis on it, use the debugger to get it fixed, get it running, do analysis of the hardware in there. We can do heterogeneous stuff, we do the whole RISC-V stuff, and um, we allow you to build these systems and run them, and 
we allow you to do it. So we do not, we're not a service company, we're a product tool builder. So if you want to find out more about us, we're in the exhibit floor stand 416. And we've got a, a couple of papers. We've got a paper tomorrow on verification, and there's a, a tutorial on um, uh, Thursday morning we're doing. And with that, I have two seconds left, so thank you very much.